Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. I'm Jim Helmer and in this video we're going to take a look at section 6.6 .6 that deals with exponential and logarithmic equations and how to solve those equations. Let's uh, take for example this logarithmic equation which basically states to what power do I raise 2 in order to get 40? Now in the previous videos our uh, answers were nice integers or something we could plug directly into our calculator. But in this example, that's not the case here because there is no nice integer power that I can raise to to get 40 because 40 is not a perfect power of 2. So one thing we want to do is maybe write it in logarithmic form. I identify the base to be 2. So I can write it as log base 2 of 40, the argument equals x, the exponent, because logarithms are equal to the exponent. Now, if we look at this, maybe we could take it from here, as we learned in the previous video, maybe we want to use change of base or something along those lines. Well, <clears throat> once we have a logarithmic or exponential equation, what we want to do is assess it first. Is it something that's quadratic in form? Uh, if we wrote this in exponential form, is it in quadratic form? Essentially is this term squared relative to this term's variable? Um, if, the, if not, then we want to write it as a log. And that's what we did in this example here. This was not quadratic in form, so we wrote it as a log. And our last resort would be to graph it. Graph the, this value and graph this value, a horizontal line, and just see where they intersect. Use our intersect function of our calculator's graph to find the solution. Or, in this case, we'd use change of base. So let's go ahead. Let's uh, pull out our calculators and graph this. 2 to the x is going to look something like that on our calculator. And if we adjust the window properly, y equals 40 is a horizontal line. So what we're doing is we're looking for this value right here. And we can go ahead and we can use the intersect function uh, first first line, second line, and then pick upper and lower limits. Depending on your calculator, uh, it may be a little bit different. Be familiar with your calculator. Otherwise, we could solve it algebraically by simply doing change of base. Now, I'm going to use the natural log and just write it as ln of the argument 40 over ln of the base 2. And that is something I can put in my, parent or my calculator. But I'm going to remember to use parentheses when I put it in there so we don't make any order of operation errors with our calculators. So this is just one example. Let's go ahead and take a look at solving others. And using our properties of algebra and what we understand now for logarithms or exponents. Now if we look at this, we have an exponential equation. I want to solve this for t because we recall e is not a variable. It's a constant. It's that irrational number, 2.71828, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> what can I do here? Well, I want to do something that maybe I can use in my calculator. And I notice the base is e. Well, I know my calculator can do a natural log, and this is the natural number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of this side. Well, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm taking the ln of both sides. Using my properties of logarithms or exponents, I know that this simplifies to the power, negative t in this case. And now, to get t by itself, I just have to change the sign or divide by negative 1, however you want to look at it, negative ln of 0 0.04. Now, this is the exact answer. No rounding necessary. t is this value. This is a value that I can plug into my calculator and uh, get whatever my calculator says. I think it's negative 3 point. Actually, I wrote it down over here so I could see it because I don't have my calculator on hand. Oh, it's a positive 3.218. The 8's repeating, so we'll just round it to the fourth decimal. So this is something we could put in our calculator. Now let's look at this example here. Well, the first thing I want to do is get that exponential equation, or the exponential part, all by itself. So 
I can undo this multiplication, undo our order of operations. If I divide both sides by 0 0.3, 0 0.2 over 0.3, well, that's 2 thirds. And I'm just going to leave it as a fraction, as 2 thirds. I could rewrite this as uh, 0.6 repeating, but we don't want to do any rounding just yet. Now, what I can do is I can take the log, I can introduce a log here to get this out of the exponent. Now, I could take log base 4 of each side, but eventually, when I want to solve for x, it's got to be something I can put in my calculator. So at this point, I'm going to introduce a log my calculator can do immediately. Maybe I'm going to use log base 10 this time. Log base 10. Well, what I do to one side, I do to the other. Take the log of each side. So now, if I look at this example here, I can use my power rule of exponents and bring that out front, multiply them. 0.2x log base 10 of 4 equals log of 2 thirds. <clears throat> now, my goal is to solve for x. So let's continue to undo the math to get x by itself. x is being multiplied by 0.2 and log base 10 of 4. So I'm going to divide both sides by this and this. And when I do that, I get x equals log of 2 thirds divided by 0.2 log of 4. Now this is base 10. This is something I could plug into my calculator and get an answer to. And if I do plug this into my calculator, maybe there's some cleaning up I could do. This is 2 tenths, so maybe I want to uh, reduce it to uh, uh, 1 fifth, maybe write its reciprocal 5 log of 2 thirds over uh, 2 log, or 1, or just log of 4, excuse me. Or just plug it in like that. We can use a calculator for time's sake, and we'll just put it in. We get negative 1.4624, and that would continue, so this would have to be rounded at some point. So it's really not an equal sign. It's an approximation because we're rounding it. So this is the exact, and I'll write that exact, because there was no rounding necessary. This is the value of x, and this is our calculator value, which at some point needs to be rounded. So let's review what steps we actually applied here and maybe do a few more examples. When it comes to working with exponential or logarithmic uh, equations, if we're dealing with logs, we want to, first thing is to isolate it to a single logarithm. Maybe we use our properties of logarithms to simplify it to that single log and then isolate it. And if we can, convert it to an exponential equation. Maybe it's some nice value that we could do without a calculator. If not, we're using those properties to write it as a single logarithm or exponential expression equal to whatever the other side of the equation is, because these are equations. Try to simplify it. And then third, use domain. Now think about the answers you find. Are they valid answers? Are they within your domain? And something I didn't do in those previous examples was to check my domain. Am I taking the log of a positive value not equal to 0? And <clears throat> if these fail, we can go to our graph. <clears throat> we can graph one side of the equation, graph the other side of the equation, and find where they intersect. So let's look at an example here. We have natural log of x equals negative 2. Well, we already have it isolated as a single logarithmic uh, value here, ln of x. And we can use the properties. Well, it's already a single logarithm, so we don't have to add or subtract, multiply or divide anything here. So let's write it as an exponential equation. So to write it as an exponential equation, essentially I can say, OK, well, my base is e, my power is negative 2, and that is equal to x. Again, this is the exact value. e to the negative second is x. This is something I can plug into my calculator and find the solution. And then check it. Is this value of x in the domain? If this value was negative, which it wouldn't be when I plug it in my calculator, then I couldn't use it. It'd be no solution for this example. Let's look at this one here. We have log base 2 of the quantity x plus 1 plus log base 2 of the quantity x minus 1. Now, 
we can use our properties of logarithms, since they have the same base, and we have the addition of logs, we can use the product rule. It's log base 2 of x plus 1 times x minus 1. And if I FOIL those out, I see there it's the sum and difference of terms, which is going to give me x squared minus 1 when I multiply these two together, equals 3. Now that I've used my properties of log to write this as a single logarithm, I can now write it as an exponential equation. 2 to the third equals x squared minus 1. And 2 to the third is just 8. So what I can do is maybe I can set this equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. x squared minus 9 equals 0. Well, here, this is quadratic in form. It is a quadratic, actually. And I can factor it, and I find x equals plus or minus 3. 3 squared minus 9 is 0. Negative 3 squared is 9 minus 9 is 0. True statement with either case. But here's where I have to be very careful. Do these values fall within my domain? If I put in a positive 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Log base 2 of 4, well, 4 is just 2 squared, so this value is 2. If I put in th positive 3, just like I did here, 3 minus 1 is 2. Log base 2 of 2 reduces to 1. 2 plus 1 is, in fact, 3, so I didn't violate any domain. I know that x equals a positive 3. But what happens if I check the negative 3? Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. The log of a negative is not within the domain, so my negative doesn't work, just x plus 3. So make sure you check that domain. All right, let's look at a couple more examples. This is actually going to be a very short section here. All right, the first thing is we have log of the quantity x plus 5 minus log of the quantity x minus 3 equals log of 2. Now, I identify that these all have the same base, and that base isn't written, so I have to assume they're common logs. Base 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the properties of logs to say, well, if I have the difference of logs, I can write it as log of x plus 5 over x minus 3. So the log of this quantity equals log of 2. Now, I'm going to do something a little different here. I know it's base 10 logs, so on the other examples, maybe I took uh, the log of both sides. Well, since I already have a log, Let's use the base. What if I raise both sides so that they're the power of 10, our base? Well, if we recall one of our rules of logarithms or exponents, if they have the same base, they reduce to 1. So if that's the case, I have this argument equals that argument because they had the same base. So x plus 5 over x minus 3 equals 2. And now this is a problem I can solve. I can multiply both sides by x minus 3 to get x plus 5 equals 2x minus 6. And solve for x, subtract an x from both sides, add 6, and I get x equals 11. Let's check to see, make sure I didn't violate any domain here. If I put 11 in here, 11 plus 5 is 16. So a positive value, that's good news. 11 minus 3 is 8. And if we think about it, since this is a difference, 16 over 8 is 2. Log base 10 of 2 equals log base 10 of 2. That's a true statement. So I know that that is correct, and it didn't violate any domain. Now, <clears throat> your quiz that I'd like you to try for yourself is very similar to this one. Try to solve this equation using your properties of logs. We can combine this side to a single log because they're both base 3. We can combine this side to a single log because they're both base 3. And then we can maybe raise both sides to be the power of 3, 3 to this side, 3 to that side, just like we did here, and simplify it from there. Solve for x. Make sure it's within the domain. And the second part of your quiz, make sure you know how to use your calculator, is solve this example by graphing. Put in this value as your y1. Put in this value 
as your y2, and find the intersection using the intersection function of your calculator. So your quiz is two parts for this video. Make sure you know how to use those properties log to write it as a single log on both sides. Maybe you could even set it equal to zero. Think about that, something you can try. And then know how to graph it as well. This has been section 6.5, logarithmic and exponential equations. Thank you for watching.